he is sitting at the right hand of the father father is omnipresent so where is his right hand so right hand of the father means it is the majestic place that is written here 600 and yeah 662 says when i am lifted up from the earth will draw all men to myself the lifting up of jesus on the cross signifies and announces his lifting up by the by his ascension into heaven and indeed begins it jesus christ the one priest of the new eternal covenant entered not into a sanctuary made by human hands but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god on our behalf there christ permanently exercised his priesthood for the for he always lives to make intercession for those who draw near to god through him henceforth christ is seated at the right hand of the father 663 capit catechism 663 by the father's right hand we understand the glory and honor of divinity where he who exists exists as son of god before all ages indeed as god of one being with the father is seated bodily after he became incarnate and his flesh was glorified okay now from this i want to bring home this idea when jesus said you shall do greater things because i am going to the father so where are we where are we where are we we are we are also with him going to the father that is why we will do greater things <laughs> so we must recognize through the mystery of incarnation passion death and resurrection these 33 years of salvific act god has renewed the whole world whole humanity transforming them into the bosom of the father and when we believe that you shall do all that i do and greater things than i do and after that is the church began the church came after pentecost after this situation the church was born church was born after this phenomena and holy spirit is given to us to do all that what christ did all that christ did he shown to us as a pilot plan which you will do after the pentecost so that is why you said you shall do all that i do and greater things than i do what is the greater things very important it's very interesting it's very interesting pay attention let us stand up and praise god now i am telling you something very beautiful now let us stand up and praise god somebody get me some water hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah oh lord give us this great revelation give us this revelation holy spirit help us holy spirit to understand this revelation help us holy spirit to understand this revelation yes please be seated now what means the great things you shall do all that i do and greater things than i do 
Now, it's very interesting, very pay special attention. Jesus' work for salvation, his salvation saving plan is only possible after his passion. That is why when, when Jesus said to Peter, I must go to Jerusalem. They will persecute me. I will be killed. But on the third day I will rise again. Then Peter said, Oh no, Lord. It, may this not happen. Then Jesus said, Get away, Satan. Your thinking is of human being. <laughs> then what should he think? Your thinking is like not like God. So what is why Jesus had to die? Then only the whole world can receive salvation. So while Jesus was living here, he could only give a pilot plan like a taste of salvation like to this one man he says your sins are forgiven so in Mark's gospel chapter 4 about the planting the sower sowing the seed and the seed which fell on the pathway the devil took it so at that time the apostles asked can you interpret? So Jesus said, the mysteries of the kingdom of God is revealed to you, not to others. For 10, 11, 12 says, they may hear but not understand. They should hear but not understand. They should see but not perceive and come to me and to be forgiven. They should not be forgiven. Huh? What is the meaning? Why should he say they should not be forgiven? Because accordingly, we know that he has come to forgive the sins of the humanity. So why he say that they should not be forgiven? So for two, for twelve. He says, they may look and see, but not perceive. And hear and listen, but not understand. In order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. <laughs> Why they may not be converted and forgiven? Therefore he spoke in parables. He spoke in parables so that they should not understand. They should not perceive and convert it. They should not be forgiven. Why? Why? Now, tell me, how Jesus can forgive the sins? What is not bending? What is necessary for the forgiveness of sin? Please answer. What is most necessary for the forgiveness of sin? Eh? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Exactly. He must sacrifice his life for the redemption of the humanity. Then only the forgiveness is possible. So before that in his public life he has given forgiveness so that they must know the son of God has power to forgive sins. Not a general forgiveness is possible. It is not possible. It is possible only after Jesus' redemptive sacrifice happened. So that is how you have to understand. You shall do all that I do. That is first he says sacrifice a life. And greater things than I do. 
greater things than i do is after his death after his passion death and resurrection only we can evangelize then only evangelization is possible but at that time he is not here <laughs> he is not here he has to be away from the earth he has to go up and then he will pour out the spirit through <coughs> so through the spirit <coughs> <laughs> the work he was doing you will do through the holy spirit and through his mystical presence that is what jesus said you shall do all that i do and greater things that i do in jesus's public life he only gave very limited people salvation because he cannot give salvation to all the people unless he give the sacrifice of salvation so during the public life all what he did was a pilot plan john paul 2 in in rhythm of his missio paragraph 16 very clearly says it was a prophecy how the kingdom of god we have to do after his resurrection and ascension and the coming of the holy spirit so after the coming of the through the coming of the holy spirit through the pentecost only the real messianic action will take place the real messianic action of the evangelization take place that was the plan of god that's why he says oh i mean i mean i said to you whoever believes in me shall do all that i do and greater things than i do because i am going to the father anyway i think this will give us a lot of freedom when you understand this now we are going to conclude this session with the anointing of the holy spirit we will make a eucharistic adoration and anointing of the holy spirit but before that i want to tell you holy father time and again said use catechism of the catholic church in the catechism of the catholic church it is i want to give you a little motivation after second vatican council so much new teachings came and after 20 years of the vatican council again the council fathers met in 1985 and all the council fathers opinion was the fruit of the council the the great teaching of the council must be summarized in one book so that it can be a reference teaching for the believers which will include the existing catechism and the dogmatic teachings there is no change in any dogmas in the vatican council there is no new dogma vatican council did not change any dogma but Vatican Council made it more explicitly clear and understandable with the present situation of the world and it has it was such a great work of the holy spirit so the church fathers or the the council fathers asked we can we have a teaching like that inclusive including the vatican council teaching and the early church fathers teaching and the dogmas of the teaching church all together and pope and the council has uh, that that synod decided like that and pope john paul ii 
commissioned, made a commission headed by the great Cardinal Ratzinger with a 12 member, count, other 12 experts on the catechism and they compiled this with the work of nearly six years or seven years. So in 1992, this dogmatic constitution, this apostolic constitution came to existence, which is the only, which is the best teaching, summarizing the doctrine of the church, the dogmas of the church, the teaching of the fathers, and the life of the faith of church. So in this there are four parts. The first part is the profession of faith, that is the detailed study of the credo. Second part is the celebration of faith, that is the sacraments, seven sacraments. And third part is the life in faith, that is the commandment and the grace and how the life of Christ is, Christian is led by the Spirit. And the fourth part is the prayer of faithful. And one, when I began to learn this, I felt very difficult to beginning from the beginning. And in Austria, when I began my ministry, the Lord said to me, teach the catechism. That is in 2000, year 2000. And I organized a one month, one month residential course for German speaking people. And in that morning to evening, I was teaching the catechism. Then I got an idea from the Holy Spirit, don't start from the beginning, instead start from the last. The last is the part of the prayer and in that the last is the teaching of the Our Father prayer. So Our Father prayer itself has got 106 articles in this. Only Our Father prayer. And when I learned that, then everything become very good. Even my prayer life become completely different. So when we learn first, don't begin, learn from the beginning, instead learn from the fourth part. Start learning from the prayer. So that goes very well because as Christians, childhood onwards, first thing we learned was prayer. And Jesus himself, first thing he taught was our father prayer and prayer. And then it becomes a very intoxicating feeling to me to drink from this treasure. Now you ask any question about catechism, I can immediately say in this number, in this number it is written there. People ask me many such suggestions ask questions, where is it written in catechism about this? Immediately I can say. So much this whole thing has become by heart to me. So my humble suggestion is Bible alone is not enough. You must learn every day at least one paragraph of catechism and then you will find your faith become so strong, rooted in the dogma and the magisterium of the church. That is how we become strong in faith. When we become strong in faith, then what Jesus says, whoever believes in me shall do all that I do. And all Jesus' teaching is summarized, all the healings he summarized, woman, your faith is great. Whatever you wish will be given. Man, you believed, so it happened. And he says, even if you have a faith as much as of a mustard seed, nothing is impossible to you. Now it is written here, Isur ke liye asambhav nahi hai. Nothing is impossible to God. 
that is not a big thing yes everything is possible for god no wonder in that <laughs> sorry but there is another word jesus said nothing is impossible for you matthew chapter 1721 matthew chapter 1721 that should be our our situation matthew chapter 1721 because i mean i said to you if you have faith the size of a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move now the next word everybody repeat nothing will be impossible 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 for god what is written there nothing shall be impossible for you for you why because this god is in you fully in you so our advantage is <laughs> make the matter very easy get the work done by christ and holy spirit get the work done by christ and holy spirit he is ever ready to do everything for you that is the meaning nothing will be impossible for 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 me for you if you have faith as a mustard seed so with that we conclude here and now we we are going to make a anointing prayer as a part of this retreat and here now let us let us thirst for a increased anointing to do mighty evangelization work and ask the lord to increase our faith yes and